like where we where we are today is you've been in the AI and ML space far before grandma had chat GPT on her iPhone, right? Like, so <laughs> yeah. like what, where are we in the adoption curve? Like, are we in the beginning, the middle? Like, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's still, I would say really early. Um, you know, it, it comes in waves, you know, there was a huge hype for it, I think in the eighties. And then there was like what you call it an AI winter because a lot of those promises just never kind of came to fruition. Mm. There were a lot of good architectures and designs, but there just wasn't the compute power or the data needed to kind of power them. And so a lot of the kind of renaissance came from, well, now we have like cheap storage. There's a ton of data that's collected from just the internet naturally, right. and kind of structured databases naturally. Um, and compute became a lot cheaper um, with the cloud stuff. And so that really pushed forward kind of the, the whole community for a, a while. And that's what I think where we are now is we're kind of seeing the fruits of that. Mm. Um, like neural net architectures have been around for for a decent chunk of time, but it's just now when you look at the curves of how they've evolved, you know, they get you know, orders of magnitude bigger and uh, stronger, faster, and the architectures change a bit, but they're not like super different than what they were. Interesting. Uh, and even from when I started, you know, like there was a neural net type for each type of problem you wanted to solve. What's it, can you define what a neural net means in, in simple terms? Yeah, I mean, it, it's effectively just a, a machine learning architecture where, you know, there, you have these uh, neurons, they're called. It's, it's loosely coupled to how they think the brain How a functions. brain works. Yeah, it's not actually... Um, because we don't really know how the brain works. That's but, what I thought. But it's, you know, has, there are these binary switches of like, is this neuron activated or not? And kind mm. of how you structure these neurons together is kind of the architecture of the neural network. And, you know, it has these uh, effectively weights and you, know, you, you end up, any machine learning algorithm generally is you have an objective function that you say, I want to either maximize this good thing or minimize this bad thing. Mm -hmm. And you construct that function to kind of give the output that, um, that you're actually trying to, to optimize for. And then, you create these networks to try and learn how to maximize or minimize that function and figure out weights. Given this input, mm. what should the weights on this network be to, mm -hmm. to say here's like a good output or a... Um, it's, a it's a web of independent algorithms that are connected to each other? Well, independent neurons that are connected to each other. Um, it's, it's, yeah, each neuron basically has like, it can turn on and off uh, effectively. But um, they all have their own kind of weights to determine what they should do, given that I see this input coming from a previous layer of a neural network. Hmm. Here's how I should act. And how you structure those neurons is really what was happening over the last, I would say, 10, 15 years of research is, you know, convolutional neural networks were designed to process image data. Recurrent neural right. networks were process designed serial data, audio, speech, text, um, things that have to happen. Yeah. In a linear fashion. In a linear fashion. And the interesting... See, guys, Nick Crown knew one word, right? There. Yeah, no, they, that's, that's right. <laughs> well, because be an image you can process simultaneously and audio is is a time, there's a time factor to it. It moves in one direction. Exactly. Yeah. And like the word before impacts the next word that you would yeah, see. Yeah, cascading effect. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas like it, it's an image is spatial, right? Like the pixel here, you know, yeah. impacts all the pixels yes. around it, but it's not necessarily like linear. Which is why you can take a finger, well, you can take a fingerprint of a song too. Uh, Shazam, you guys have clearly got that on lock. Yeah. But the fingerprint of, a, of an image is you can select a, a, a cluster of random pixels. It's very lightweight and you can understand what an image is really fast, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. For, for sure. And so, so but each, each one of those kind of domains was optimized in and of itself. And I think in 2016, when that transformer paper came out of Google, um, it all started to converge really on this new architecture of transformers, which can process kind of all sorts of uh, different types of data, text, image, video. They're flexible. Um, yeah, a little bit more flexible. It's, it's kind of converging into one. And that is a lot of the power that you see now. All chat GPT, I mean, the T in, is transformer uh, in, in GPT and... Uh, that's the architecture that's really blown up, I think, over the last uh, two years. Mm. So it, it says, I don't care what you feed me. The innovations there are something called attention, self-attention, and uh, you know, basically how the neurons kind of communicate with each other, what kind of information can they use from other parts of the network, and it just allows it to be a lot smarter. They're less kind of hyper-focused on uh, one little thing and, and can optimize in over kind of a broader sense of themselves. Right. And let's touch on why you need humans to train it's great, yeah. These things. It's a great question. This is, uh, you know, I'm sure you've seen hallucinations that come out of things like GPT. The reason for that is that they don't really have a lot of humans telling them this is good or this is mm -hmm. bad. It's just here's a bunch of text. And, it, you know, so you ask a question to it. It's not actually trying to understand the question that you're asking. It's trying to piece together an answer that I think sounds like 
Maybe it's a best guess. The question. Yeah, and it's just trying to it's trying to mimic, right? Given the word before, can I predict the next word? Just why prompt engineering matters so much, right? Yeah. You need to ask it in the right way because it's kind of yeah. And know, guys, so prompt it. engineering is everyone's doing it, and you don't even know you're doing it when you say <laughs> write rewrite this sentence in an interesting way that might make Sherlock Holmes want to read. Like it's yep. like that's a prompt. Yep. And there's an entire field of prompt Starting engineering up, now yeah. where you're like, I'm a specialist in getting the robot to tell me exactly the way that we want it. You know, an inspiring piece in 36, you know, you know, 3,600 words that does this, this, and this, and has, you know, references to the great Gatsby. Yeah. Prompt engineering. Exactly. I would be surprised. That's going to be a short lived field, I imagine, but it's going to be pretty hype. Uh, hype because machines sure. will start to write prompts. They'll get better at it. Yeah. Like or understanding what you're saying, you'll be able to be more flexible with how you talk to some of these things. Right. It'll be, a, which you're already seeing with GPT-4 versus totally. GPT-3. Yep. GPT-3, you'd need to nudge that little sucker a little bit more. And now GPT-4, it's like, I got you, bro. Yeah. It's like, I already kind of know what you're trying to say. Totally. <laughs> which, is, which is the whoa factor that folks have, including myself, when right. they have, when they interact now with GPT-4. Yep. And so because it's trying to do like word prediction, it's trying to stay on topic and trying to create something semantically useful, but it's not really being trained to say this is accurate or not, which right. is why you get like, you know, you can ask it, you know, make up some, uh, some person, give me the biography of some 17th century philosopher. Uh -huh. and it'll just make up a fault, like a biography of a guy that didn't exist kind of thing. It's like, this sounds right. This right. sounds like a 17th century right. French guy, you know? Right. I've got uh, friends that do this, I think. And they're, <laughs> this is way, they were doing that way before GPT three and four. Us, yeah. 